Hey there. It's kind of fun kicking around difficult material like this uh, pre-heart uh, steel here in a, in a way that I'm not real familiar with. And it, uh, I'm going to conquer it. But I was going to say it's sure a lot easier in the Monarch 10 WE when you've got the variable speed. And uh, that helps a lot. Something starts shattering, you can back it off or even speed it up. You know, you can play around with that a little bit. The hard inch has a variable uh, feed, and uh, that that worked in a good way too. So you get a you get an old Gary head machine like this, everything's kind of fixed. So I gotta get the tool just right and uh, fit it into a slot that the uh, machine operates at. Well, so. That's kind of what I'm poking at. I thought I'd go ahead and load this uh, video and show you some of my trials and tribulations, though I haven't reached uh, great success yet. Okay. I hope you guys have a good day. I'm going to kick around in here as much as I can. I don't think it's going to get as hot today, so I'm going to try to get a lot done. So I'll probably be back. Have a good morning. All right, I'm getting to like this setup here, the way I have this grinder. It might seem odd, but this is a good spot to operate from here, alone with the front. And the way I had it before, it's kind of choked off back here. Okay, what I'm going to do is just uh, uh, grind these tools here. <coughs> You can watch this if you want to. It's really easy. These are my Micro 100 tools right here. And they're cooked on the tip, so i got to cut them back. Okay. Well, somewhere, there it is. I lost my regular wrench for this thing, so I'm using a, a substitute. I can just grab these like this pretty, pretty easily. And we'll rotate that on over. So you've got a ball bearing table here. And I'm going to put this square on here. And um, get this on here. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. I just want to get that uh, tip of that tool. Let me get that across there. A little harder. I got the camera in the way here, I think. It's not cooperating at all. Look that over. There we go. Get a little more flat. There. Okay. Just want to get that edge of the tool flat. Let's see what we got here. I don't know if we can see. Here, let me click this back on. I'll get it. Okay, light. got a light on the subject here. Now, I got a uh, just a regular old household vacuum here to catch that uh, carbide dust, and this works quite well. It's kind of funny how air will flow unpredictably. Okay, I'll put a little bit of dye on there so I can see. Or Sharpie. Okay, fire it up. There it is. Okay, we'll try it. Everything seems good. Okay, I'm going to feed it in. And turn on that vacuum. I think you can see. Yeah, you can see everything. Let's see if the vacuum catches uh, carbide dust. There it is. For some reason, that uh, brush on there makes a big difference. If the brush is not on there, it doesn't catch the dust so good. I can even rotate that first slightly, maybe, I don't know. I'm not smelling the carbide. If you smell carbide, then uh, you're breathing it. 
and it's not good for you at all. Okay, I'm gonna pick that back a little more. Get this set to zero. Okay, that's good. Let's just polish a little bit there. Okay. I'll get the other tool to do the same and uh, we'll get back over there and make a cut. Okay, I got a piece of uh, pre hard steel in here. And uh, it's quite hard, it's hard all the way through. Now, the last cut I made on this, I'm testing for taper, push over. One of these uh, micro 100 tools failed, start spark, and it left these lines. And so what happened is it work hardened this. So I'm going to I'm going to make a cut with this. Let's get that in there right now. There we go. But first, let me set this aside. I'm going to use a carbide insert tool. I get this over here and clean that off. And this tool here is pushing the work over about uh, a thou, thou and a half. Um, working the tool in about five thousand steps, which left a pretty good finish. Let's see if it still do that. Clean that off, and we'll go to the other one. The finishing tools. Okay, I'm going to do it at 849 RPM. And I've seen a little over 6,000. Okay, got that piece of steel and I used this insert to clean up the mess that I failed to left. Left, you know, ridges and kind of work hard. So I'm going to take a finish cut on this with a Micro 100 uh, tool with a, a tw just a little over 
20 thousandths, about a 25 thousandths nose radius. Uh, I'm, I'm going to cut it at about 5 thousandths depth, the same depth we did here. And I'm going to put a gauge on here and show you what happened. We're going to check at 2 inches. I got a little more sticking out there. How we do? Let's get that so you can see it for sure. And let me adjust it. Get it on there and adjust it. This is a mid to Toyo dial snap gauge. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay, we'll move it over right at the two inch mark. Okay, I'm gonna say it might be a little bit under one thousandth taper. And that's pretty darn good. That really is with uh, this uh, a finishing insert, but you could certainly uh, get some that. Uh, would have less pressure. Okay. So I'm going to pull that out and replace it with a fresh Micro 100 finishing tool. Okay. And we'll fire up this machine and I'm going to make a cut at 1127 RPM. <laughs> Four feet. I'm gonna have to drop down a little bit here. Okay, get us started. Get. I'm gonna probably go with feet right about five thousand. Here we go. speed 1127 
Get rid of that razor sharp ribbon and let that cool down a minute. 